Hello and welcome to Callie's in the Kitchen. I am using Pouring Your Heart Out. If you look it up on eBay store, I am using the Cascade Mold. And I'm going to do a fairy flower again because it's so much fun to dot the dots. And I'm going to do a trick that was ingenious from Julie Cutts from her YouTube channel, Pouring Your Heart Out. Um, what I'm doing is I've mixed three colors, a magenta, a turquoise, and a purple, which is exactly the same colors Miss Julie used um, because I'm deficient in figuring out colors to use. I'm, I just sort of look at my supply and I pick. So um, what I'm doing is a dirty pour where each color I'm alternating into one cup all together so that it's layered like magenta green and purple magenta green and um, purple again so I'm mixing up all the colors together into one cup this technique was created by resin courses if you sign up on resincourses.com you will learn the ratios that you need and what sort of resin you might need so once I've poured my different colored resins into my cup, I'm pouring it into the base of my mold, which is once again, the Cascade Mold, which is a fabulous mold. Um, by the way, on resincourses.com, if you go to Pouring Your Heart Out, eBay chan uh, YouTube channel, you can get a 10% code for that course. And the lovely lady who started resincourses.com, her name is Micah, and she has just tremendous videos um, available for everyone to use. For my white, for creating the flower effect, fairy flower effect, I'm using the Bloom Pigment Paste, also created by Julie Cutts of Pouring Your Heart Out. You can find that Blue Pigment Paste on her eBay store and also on Amazon. So after I poured my dirty pour of the different colors, I've put the Bloom Pigment Paste into my resin. And I have, you can see little glimpses of the piping bag that I've placed the Bloom Pigment Paste combo into. I like to tie a knot at the end of my piping bag because I'm just too afraid it's going to fall out and just kind of pour down my arm that's my nightmare but so anyway I tie a knot and then on this one I am going to uh, cut the nib of my piping bag a little bit wider than I than I usually do also before I place my white I torch the resin a little and I do it carefully because the first time I did it I ruined my mold. Oh, it was heartbreaking. I, I joined, I, I don't know what I did. Anyway, I ruined it and had to get another one. And Miss Julie was kind enough to send me a replacement. Thank you, Julie. Now with my piping bag, I am doing the dots, which is part of this fairy flower technique created by Micah in uh, resincourses.com. By the way, I got to meet her. I was on a trip, uh, coincidentally, in the same city that she was in. And what a lovely lady. We had a wonderful evening together. We talked about resin. We talked about all kinds of stuff. And she's just a delight and so talented. So um, feel free to fast forward through this dotting process and all I'm doing is just dropping drops and in a circle manner and what I do is I gently with my index finger just slightly tap the piping bag to let the white resin drop out. So I will keep quiet for a bit until I get to the next step. And as always, feel free to fast forward. So it's just dotting, 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 dotting. Dot. 
one day I will learn how to videotape to sort of fast forward through this um, so that you don't have to fast forward it, but I'm not there yet. And I've actually been away for a while uh, at home here entertaining nine family members who visited from other parts of the world to celebrate my mom's 92nd birthday. So I've been very busy, had of course resin withdrawal, uh, so had to pour a little bit or a few projects while they were here when I could sneak in some time. And if you haven't um, already, you might want to look up on Facebook the Pouring Your Heart Out group uh, created by Julie of Pouring Your Heart Out. Um, it's a wonderful group. We share our projects, we share ideas, we share comments, questions, help each other out. It's a really lovely group if you haven't joined already. So I'm thinking of things to say to entertain while I'm just dropping my drops. Let's see, what else could I talk about? Uh, I don't know. So I'll just keep quiet for a bit. Oh, I could talk about the resin I'm using. Duh. So I've used Art Pro. That hat's from resinpro.com. It's a good resin for my area, Washington State in the U.S. It works really well um, for these techniques of resincourses.com. I It's a three to two ratio on this one. And there's a lovely chart that Julie created for us to share so that we don't have to think uh, of how to calculate the ratios. It's done up for us already. And the inks I'm using are acrylic inks from Holbein, H-O-L-B-E-I-N. Not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And fortunately in my area, there is a store, uh, Dick Blick or Blick Arts, that actually sells it. So I'm able to go in person and pick what colors I want uh, rather than just order it online. Also, if you order it online from Dick Blick, I believe you get like a $10 discount um, if you purchase a certain amount uh, and you get free shipping. So anyway, these Holbein inks, acrylic inks, are really powerful. I've also used Octopus resin ink, not the alcohol inks, but this Holbein so far for me has worked wonderfully. I know there are artists out there that use the octopus write and draw, um, Dipon, but these are all European products that the shipping is just horrendous, uh, horrendously expensive. So Holbein works really well for me. And I have had some success with Let's Resin epoxy pigment paste um, and I think it was Jennifer Lyons who introduced me to that thanks Jennifer um, anyway so now that I've done all my sort of circles I now go back in between and fill in all the blank spaces that I still have left open I have a tendency to overdo the dots I don't know if that's right or wrong but that just feels like the correct thing for me to do. So, oops, sorry about that noise. Um, I just, uh, background noise. I just go in between wherever I see there's still some blank or black space, empty space with no dots, and I'm just adding it. Adding more dots. Look at, look at, look at how many dots there are. I should count them one day and actually see how many I actually do and compare it to other ones that I do of the same technique. So just dotting, dotting, dotting. Are you done, Callie? Okay. Now, with the remaining resin that I have, uh, oops, no, nope, Callie's decided to add some more. There she goes. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. 
so with the um, remainder of the resin, you're supposed to add a little white to that clear resin at the end, but I have not done so. I have done clear because I'm following uh, the video that Julie did on pouring your heart out uh, where you just use clear because I'm doing this with the intent of not using any glitter or stones or uh, tattoos or stickers in the center. I'm trying to create a pretty center without those embellishments. So now with my clear, I drop in the center of what I've just created. I pour it all the way. I'm so sorry my angle is just showing you my gloved hand, but you can imagine while you're doing this, you pour the clear resin in the center and wait a second and you'll see what happens here. Woo! Isn't that cool? So the clear resin has been placed in the center. It pushes out everything that I've dotted to the edge. And as resin, I've learned, it will pull back into the center. So what I will do at this point is actually stop videoing uh, and continue on, add on later. But what I'm going to do is wait for, and I think I waited about almost 20 minutes on this particular resin for the resin to pull in into the center as much as possible, but also thinking ahead that I don't want my resin to be too thick so that I can't do the super, super duper trick that Julie has uh, introduced us to. So as you can see, it's closing in slowly into the center. I'm letting it, the film roll for a little bit. So um, there you go. And now after 20 minutes, this is what everything has closed up. So with the super duper trick, which is called the syringe pull, I took the syringe, placed it all the way to the bottom of the mold. So it's not on the top of the resin level, but actually on the resin, I mean, on the mold itself. And then I'm sucking and pulling up the resin. See the, see how much resin I pulled up on the first one? And then look at the, the design, it's kind of pulled in more. So then I discharge what I've pulled in for the syringe and I do it again. It's a little tricky and I do apologize for the background noise. I'm getting some comments back on some uh, other things I've posted. Pulling up syringe, suck, discharge, and then you see how the the pattern is pulling in more and more into the center. Okay, so now I think that's it. I feel like that's enough. So next day, which was actually this morning, hello again, and it's time for the demolding. So the resin has cured to the point where I can remove it from the cascade mold. And here we go. Looky, 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 look. Oh, it worked. Julie, you are a genius on the syringe trick. So look at this piece. What I love is that I didn't need to put glitter, stones, or anything in the center. And the whole thing closed up. So it worked. Thank you so much for watching.